May I come in, sir? Yes, please. Let's take like your seat. Thanks. Thank you. Your good name is Aman Sadiq. Sir, that's correct. Feel comfortable, Aman, and please introduce yourself to all of us. Sir, my name is Aman Sadiq. I belong to District Noshera, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, from where I have done my higher secondary schooling, and I have received bachelor's in maritime studies from Pakistan Marine Academy in 2012. And ever since, sir, I have been working as a junior navigating officer on board ships. And sir, besides that, I have been awarded with a bronze medal in a poetry competition organized by United Poets Laureate International in 2015. And sir, besides that, I was uh, an athlete. And uh, sir, my other interests include fitness, swimming, book reading. And sir, this is going to be my first appearance in CSS and my first interview. Okay. So how you got the idea to go for the civil service exam? Sir, actually the diversity that is associated with the civil service attracted me because uh, as far as my job is concerned, for eight years I have been doing this job and if you are a navigator, you will remain a navigator for the rest of life. But as far as the civil service is concerned, you get to know more about country and about the world and uh, sir, the diversity associated with basically attract me in this regard. You have done your bachelor degree in maritime studies. Yes. Can you tell us uh, what are these uh, maritime stu studies and what was the nature of your job? Uh, sir, the maritime studies is basically what we study in Pakistan as compared to other uh, regions. Sir, this is totally related to the navigation and ship construction, sir. Uh, so, as far as the maritime, the degree title is concerned, we do not study as such things in, in it. But sir, as compared to the other countries, they do study about the ports, about the trade and other things. So, so this degree is basically concerned with the navigation and uh, the ship construction knowledge itself. And you have been traveling in the merchant ships? Sir, I have been traveling for eight years. Hmm. Who is the regulator of oceans? Regulator of oceans or IMO, International Maritime Organization is. And because there is no demarcation as such, boundary nahi hai na? Sir, uh, how, how do you fix your boundaries? Say hey, Pakistan has got certain boundaries. Uh, sir, what is the international law? How they are regulated? Sir, it? this is in accordance with the United, uh, United Nations Convention on Laws of Seas, UNCLOS, that was uh, concluded in 1982. So basically that is uh, associated with it and that demarcate the sea boundaries in reality, sir. But there is, we keep on listening about this uh, China, South China issues. Sir. Can you tell me what are these issues and why they are fighting with each other? They are not happy with each other, Chinese and uh, the other South Asian countries. So basically, uh, Chinese are violating the UNCLOS that was concluded in 1982 because they are nine dash policy. And as far as the recent uh, recordings are concerned, now it has become 10 dashes. So they are there to, uh, to, uh, to bring their hegemony, uh, their oceanic hegemony and they want to bypass and overlook other nations who have also uh, their part in uh, the ocean. For example, the Philippines and the Vietnam also. So they are basically uh, making their ocean, uh, their islands in the ocean and they are uh, doing this military procurement and other sort of military installations and on those islands. Yeah, there are general saying that it could be the flashpoint between US and China, the South China Sea. Do you think there is a possibility for this issue? Sir, there, there is a possibility, in, uh, uh, particularly when we talk about Taiwan, which was uh, um, separated or um, somehow separated from China after the conclusion of uh, Chinese revolution, communist revolution in 1949. So basically in that area, the United, Nation, uh, United States of Americans Navy and particularly their sixth fleet is there to uh, defend uh, uh, Taiwan and they have intervened in the first Ta uh, Taiwan crisis in 1956 and also in the third as recent as in 1996. So there is a flashpoint uh, to some extent. Hmm. Now there is a CPAC, uh, the, see, under the CPAC, uh, Chinese, they may be having the first uh, Gawadar and uh, this new route, road network. And on that South China Sea route, they are exporting, say they are exporting to Middle East. What is the distance? 
Sir, it is a distance around 3,000, uh, 13,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, and what will be the distance, uh, this Gabadar to uh, Kashgar? Uh, it will be around uh, 25. 100, uh, 2400 to 2500 kilometers. How much time they take when the ship is moving from Shanghai to uh, say this, uh, the port of Aden? To port of Aden, sir, it will take around 11 days. Uh, in and how much time they will take if uh, they uh, bring it from Kashgar to Gawadar? Uh, from Gawadar to Kashgar, if uh, it depends on the transportation uh, in particular, Existing. but uh, uh, the whole, uh, if we compare about the um, uh, distance from Peshawar to Karachi in that regard, the tra uh, trailers get uh, um, reach in about 32 to 36 hours. So in that we can uh, make calculations in that regard. In a couple of days they can reach. That's true, sir. That's true. In a couple of days they can reach from Kashgar to Gawadar, sir. Actually, you are uh, from Noshera. Sir. They, there is a general uh, talk that a lot of tourism is being developed in KPK. Can you tell us what reforms they are making, what type of tourism they are developing? Sir, uh, the first thing which they are doing that uh, they are uh, basic, uh, they, they are originally uh, focusing on the infrastructure because there are a lot of uh, spots, tourist spots in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, northern areas. Uh, for example, sir, we have Malam Jabba that uh, we have in uh, before. We didn't have any sort of communication and metal roads towards that, so they are building it. And the places like Kumrat, which is also regarded as the paradise on earth by uh, by Imran Khan by the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So they are uh, doing this thing on uh, the first basis. The secondly, sir, they are promoting tourism to on diplomatic level also because they feel that Pakistan has this, this that potential to attract the foreign tourists towards its nectar. So that are uh, the things, sir, I, I know about the tourism. How can you bring uh, oceans near to KPK? So we, we can't. How? It's natural. You can bring. Uh, but sir, the thing we can uh, do is the management of rivers, the Indus River. Uh, for example, Yangtze River in China and the Mississippi in the United States. They have been doing a great job in that regard and they are earning billions of dollars uh, on it. So the management of rivers can bring oceans closer to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Sir. That's what I feel. That uh, this is a weakness, it could be a personal weakness, non-punctual in prayers. Hmm? When you are writing about weaknesses and uh, strength, it should be more focused on professional issues. Sir. And you have done uh, one of the paper by gender studies. Yes. Sir. Why did you opt for the subject? Sir, gender studies has this sensitivity to make us closer to the gender issues which Pakistan is passing through at the moment. Not only Pakistan, but particularly if you talk about the subcontinent. So to know more about these gender issues, I opted for gender studies, sir. Have you looked into the problems of uh, transgender? Sir, I, I have looked. What is the population of transgender in Pakistan? Sir, I am not sure about the population. But you can find it in the census of 2017. Sir, I, I, I you can find the figures. The figures are there. Yes, sir. I'll look for it. What was the function of Merchant Navy? What is the function of Merchant Navy? Sir, Merchant Navy is based on the total mercantilism of a nation. For example, if you are building Merchant Navy, you are basically involved with the, the trade uh, with, the, uh, with the world. So Merchant Navy is basically concerned with the trade matters and you use, um, I mean, the, a country use ships, etc. to uh, transform its goods from one place to another, sir. Thank you. Why you have a fancy for PS? Sir, uh, uh, what I feel that uh, Pakistan Administrative Service has this potential to empower a person uh, in this regard, to materialize it, his or her vision in its true sense. What is your vision? Sir, I, uh, the valuable community service for uh, the contribution in the valuable community service is one of my uh, visions that I feel for my country, sir. That, that, that you can 
uh, contribute uh, in any service, in police, in customs, in any uh, public service. It's public service. What's so special about it? So Pakistan Administrative Service, as I mentioned earlier, the diversity uh, um, related to this um, uh, service, this cadre, has no major, no other... Uh, what do you mean by diversity? Can you explain that? So, for example, if a person is assistant commissioner, he will not be an assistant commissioner in, in that district management, but he will switch on to other uh, departments also. Will He will, uh, in the later stage of uh, his duties or her duties, he will switch on to other uh, departments. So, that diversity I am talking about. So, you get to know uh, more about uh, departments and about country. Jack of all trades. To some extent, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay, what is the, how will you describe the provincial uh, bureaucratic structure of a province? In the, the tree, in hierarchy, the first, second, third, right down below. Sir, in the province, uh, in the administrative service? Yes. Uh, sir, basically uh, we have a chief, um, chief secretary on provincial level and then we have on divisional levels, we have uh, commissioners, chief commissioners. And then if there are, um, then on district level we have DCs and if there is a larger district like uh, Noshera, my district, we have ADCs also, assistant, uh, um, uh, additional deputy commission for that. And on TSE level we have assistant commissioners. Police is your second choice. Uh, what is, uh, how the provincial police officer is now known as after the introduction of police order 2002 sir the police order of 2002 uh, as i have studied about it it has somehow depoliticized police unlike uh, the police act of 1861 so that is uh, one uh, the reason i think but that not up to the mark the second thing is sir no 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 try to understand you see the provincial head of the police what did, how he uh, is known as now after the, the introduction of police order? Previously, he used to be known as Inspector General of Police, and now? Sir, he is IGP, uh, Inspector General of Police. At, at police order says something else? Sir, you, I, you, I, I didn't. We have no idea about the hierarchy, police hierarchy, or organization tree. Uh, sir, I, I didn't study that deep. No. So, this is your second choice? and. You should know about it. Sir, you see the PPO, provincial sir. police officer, then the CCPOs, then the yes. then the DPOs and the CPOs. So, sir, the high the hierarchy. Uh, hierarchy, yes. Hierarchy, sir. Uh, basically, we have inspector generals. Then on the city level, we have CCPOs, capital city uh, police officers, and uh, which cities? Sir, uh, the uh, capital, uh, provincial capitals. Mm. Uh, CCPOs mm -hmm. and sir uh, we have uh, on divisional level we have RPOs regional police officers and on district level uh, we have uh, DPO a uh, district police officer that mm -hmm. is uh, superintendent of police mm -hmm. and sir on uh, the TSE level on, on the lower level we have ASPs and then it is uh, transformed into SHOs and other. Uh, what is continental shelf? Continental shelf is the boundary that is uh, the baseline is measured through basically uh, the, the continental shelf um, as per geological term is a slope that is made with uh, with the, the um, with the land and the shore the interface between the ocean and the shore so uh, that is basically where the, uh, the the baseline of internal waters and external waters or the territorial waters is marked. Sir. Mm. America has succeeded in, uh, you see, getting hold of a few Arab countries and has, uh, you see, made them to have diplomatic relations with Israel. What is, what is in the offing? What do you think is likely to happen further at the global level? Sir, the United States of America uh, originally wants to, to balance the Arab countries with Iran. In, in a true sense, but what I feel the United States of America is using the shatter belt region theory in this regard that will be the best to describe the situation. The shatter belt in this regard I mean sir that United States of America has success, successfully deployed its politics 
in a region that is already in turmoil. I mean, sir, we name the troubles and it's right there in, in the Middle Eastern region. So he has concluded this political venture uh, very successfully. And the second, sir, uh, in as far as uh, uh, the future of this issue is concerned, the recognition of Israel is concerned, the Israel will be getting more stronger in, in uh, the years to come. Because, sir, the military edge and uh, uh, the superiority, particularly if we talk about the air superiority and the air procurement that has been described by, uh, that has been given by the United States of America to state of Israel, basically that is dominating uh, factor of the Israel on other regions. So the, I think the rest of other uh, Arab countries and the world will come to accept Israel in this regard, sir. Uh, you gave a certain opinion on South China Sea. That's correct now. Pakistan voted in favor of China on South China Sea. Why do you think so? Ma'am, uh, as we have great diplomatic relationships with Chinese uh, in the past, they have also uh, cooperated a lot in Pakistan. And secondly, we are now the part of SCO after 2017, we are the member of SCO. So uh, the thing which I want to describe is that Pakistan is more is in more favor of ec economic oriented foreign policy at the moment. So China is the best partner, partner in this regard and that's why they have favored their will uh, in, in the matter. So you think that uh, no principles were involved in this? And do you really believe that China is trying to establish its hegemony or is it deterring American hegemony in the region? And uh, speaking of the unclause that you uh, alluded to, uh, the unclause definitions as far as the continental shelf and all is concerned is about the natural lands. Yes, ma'am. So, do you think that it is really violating on clause? Ma'am, China is uh, violating in particular on clause and if Pakistan is doing so, but uh, on the larger uh, lens, if we see it, the real politic is everywhere, ma'am. Uh, because Pakistan is now, as I uh, mentioned earlier, is on the run and on the venture to boost its economy. And uh, China is the best uh, in CPEC, uh, in regard to CPEC, in, in regard to BRI, because China is uh, influencing the world and uh, dominating the world through the regional connectivity projects. So I feel Pakistan is uh, doing that because of that. And, and the second thing which I want to mention is Pakistan is losing grounds in the Middle Eastern region and uh, it has al always tumultuous and fluctuating relationship with the United States of America on the other region. That's why Pakistan has opted to do the favor in to do the favor of Chinese in in the matter, man. Would you also like to throw some light on the Pakistan Oman maritime boundary definitions? Uh, Ma'am, uh, Pakistan and Oman uh, boundary have uh, basically that was demarcated after the Gawadar was purchased in uh, 1958, and as far as the demarcation, that will be. Uh, uh, I, I, I particularly don't have any opinion on that, ma'am. But in regard to UNCLOS, I am very sure that will be on, on that basis. So you are not updated about the um, legal battle that we had in which Pakistan won the case of continental shelf? No, ma'am. I, I didn't study it. I, I will study about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Aman, so diversity brought you from Navy to civil service, okay? Don't you think that you were more diverse in uh, Merchant Navy? Someday you were on the shores of Egypt, another day Mombasa, Africa, European country. Isn't it more interesting than uh, civil service? Sir, diversity, as I mentioned, is one of the reasons I opted for civil service. The second uh, issue that I want to mention here is the employability issue for Pakistani seafarers. As I have been in Merchant Navy since 2013 and now it's 2020. So uh, I sailed for only 40 months in, in this tenure and that's a contractual job also. That's not permanent. What is uh, Blue Waters? 
ब्लू वाटर सर हाई सीज आई डोंट नो यू टेल मी सर ब्लू वाटर इज द रीजन एज आई हैव द अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इज बियॉन्ड द एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन एंड दैट कम्स अंडर द इंटरनेशनल सी बेड अथॉरिटी ओके सो एम एम am i right to say that blue water belongs to a country or not uh, no sir that's uh, the human heritage and basically human that's what blue water is no man's land yes okay does yes. not pertain to any particular country why the colors mostly the colors of sea ships are white what's the reason sir as far as the merchant navy ships are concerned they are not white i would like to say that uh, we have red color In, at the bottom and then we have black color at uh, in the upper but uh, as far as the naval ships are concerned they are slightly grayish but uh, lighter tone colors yes sir why why sir? I, i don't have any idea about the naval ships but the merchant ships i have i have the idea sir why they are painted uh, sir was asking about you regarding the ch- trade with china and all that i am sure you must have uh, visited it what is the malacca dilemma for china So the Malacca Strait is one of the most important choke points of the world. One of the most important choke points of the world that uh, all, uh, almost 80% of world trade is passed through that. So the Malacca dilemma is that the Taiwan Taiwan has a, a great uh, navy in that region. So the Chinese basically fear that if in the time of crisis the Taiwanese navies will block this uh, the Taiwan uh, the, the Malacca Strait and their almost 90% of oil has been transported through malacca strait from the middle east and from africa so that is one what is the history of uh, Man- manki sharif in your district uh, manki sharif has a peer uh, very famous and uh, uh, that he all, uh, already uh, contributed in the independence movement of uh, pakistan and he was one of the friends of qaid azam mohammad ali jinnah also what is the second amendment of history of uh, constitution of united states uh, second amendment sir i i don't uh, what was the only amendment which was done and was then was taken back in the constitution of united states of america uh, sir i i didn't study the okay thank you sir chale ek aakhri question hai madam you go tell us something about this uh, a uh, terrorist tariff dispute between china and us and what are your views about who is on the right because this is a recent phenomena during it was raised during the government of trump sir uh, that was at the time of uh, donald trump when he imposed extra tariff of more than 500 uh, 300 to 500 billion on chinese goods and he basically fears that the chinese uh, are dominating and they are Uh, stealing their intelligence intelligence here which they have um, mentioned the donald trump but i as i um, uh, i have this particular opinion about that they they are basically trapped in tusi uh, they are basically uh, have been trapped in a tusi dedis trap that is international relations uh, best define it they have a fear of the rising chinese because the moody's an international organization they have mentioned that in 2024 China is going to be the largest economy in the world. So the American nationalist leaders like Donald Trump do not accept it. But uh, the protectionist is their uh, protectionism is is their right. But Chinese are have already uh, retaliated back by imposing tariffs on the uh, American goods. And uh, what is the result for so far? Whether the Chinese have conceded? Uh, no sir actually because the, the it has not that much impacted the chinese economy uh, as uh, the expert international expert says that chinese uh, uh, despite the allegations which have been made by the americans that they are losing jobs and their industries are toppling down and uh, they are losing everything in agriculture it doesn't seem like this that china is uh, but in the long run i believe sir china is going to win What is happening in Ladakh? Sir Ladakh is uh, the contiguous region with Gilgit Baltistan uh, and uh, Azad Jammu and Kashmir and uh, also with the uh, Indian occupied Kashmir. Uh, ma- uh, mentioning sir the reason that uh, is the Gilgit Baltistan issue 
is Pakistan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shangin. So that is, sir, uh, you um, um, mentioned to say, sir, the war in the Himalayas between uh, the uh, India and China, as they have the history of battles in 1962 when uh, China penetrated in their region. So the second thing is, sir, their irredentist claims of Chinese are there and they are fighting over that issue. Okay, man, we conclude our uh, this formal uh, session. And yeah, now we start the debriefing uh, session with you. We will give you our feedback about your interview and if you have got any questions, you can raise them. No, sir, I don't have any particular question at the moment. Good. Okay. Aman, you are quite experienced, uh, you are knowledgeable and uh, you have got a pleasant personality and your communication skills are fine, you can speak well yes, and your body language is also fine and you are quite confident. Uh, but still, uh, I think uh, you need to uh, update your current knowledge. There seems to be some uh, knowledge gap and uh, just try to update it. And when you are arguing anything, say it, whether it is Chinese or USA, have a uh, listen to both sides. The argument are from both sides. Chinese, they have got their own argument. The, uh, USA has got old, Indian have got their own viewpoint and Chinese have got their own point of view. As a student of this, uh, as a civil servant, rather I will say now, because you have got an uh, quite a chance to get through it, so try to analyze the things in the pragmatic way. So I think best of luck from my point of view. Uh, but then, I don't know oh, I have, whether I am right or wrong. You, when you are talking, you see, while you're giving answers, you shake your head like this. What's, uh, is it natural or? It, it, should, or, it is natural, sir, or to you, some extent. Or you want us to accept what you are saying is right? <laughs> no, no, sir. I think it's, it's natural style. It's natural, sir. Actually, sir, I was a debater in, in a... I was saying, I was saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Sir. Natural. I'll, I'll try to, but ah, this is natural, sir. Koshish kare, agar if you can overcome this. Right, sir. Ah. I will do that. Jaisi Durani Saab ne kaha, do try to look at all sides. What you have read on South China Sea is one perspective. There right. are other perspectives and it's not as simple as this Pakistan being an ally of China and that's why we are wanting to, for our economic gains, there are political gains also. And uh, at least I gave you the hint of UNCLOS, say how does it define continental shelf? And does Philippines really have that extension of continental? Because here there are seven contenders to South China yes. Sea. Yes. It's not just Philippines. Yes. And that is because of the problem of definition of the con continental shelf. And these islands that China has artificially created. Yes, so does the UNCLOS like. definition fall on this or not? First, right. so you have to be, as I said, the be very analytical. Right. There are always two sides of coin. So, jo aap magazines mein ya risalo mein ya akbaro mein padte hain, usko critically analyze. Right. That's my uh, um, Ma'am, I have a question regarding this because we have been uh, scared a little because of a lot of suggestions uh, about interview. The people say that you have to, you don't have to give everything in, in your answer because it will consume a lot of time and uh, people... That is true. Don't give everything, but you should look unbiased and you should look as though you have read it with a critical mind. Right. The position that you're presenting is not critical. It's just that you'd read any magazine from West on South China, they say exactly the same. Right. So it shows that you have this a little rata marawa hai. Socha nahi hai is baare mein ki iske aur kya pehlu ho sakta. Right. 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 So right. That is the point. It's not about throwing information in, but it's about showing how analytical and critical you can be. Because in civil service, it's not about the issues that we are asking you. It is about uh, mustering that ability 
to analyze situations because whether you go into foreign service or police service or administrative services, you will be in situations where there are no precedences. You will have to create your own precedence and you can do that only if you have the ability to critically analyze the situation and get all your facts right. right. So, and that's what the examiner is looking at, not about your knowledge, but about your approach towards life and the information that you have. Very kind. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ji, Aman, though, let's start with other things. U.S. history, I asked the very basic things. Second amendment and the amendment that was taken back, you should have known that. Uh, refresh it. Uske ilawa, kuch comments hai, I hope you won't mind it. Aap kaafi der better hai, phir aapne button khola, yes. coat ka. Yes, sir, that's what I felt also. Try to wear laces shoes with sir. necktie. Sir. Achha, aapka posture, uh, aap Navy se uh, trained hai, to aapki training badi achhi hogi, definitely. But aapka posture continuously, bilkul ek static posture hai. Thoda sa relax ho jai. Zaruri nahi hai ki tang pe tang hi rakhna hai, but thoda sa relax. Matlab human factor, humane jo wo hai. Do personal comment I hope you won't mind it. Try to look for a, uh, or uh, I suggest rather, let, let's, let's not mince the words. I suggest you to uh, look for a better glasses frame for yourself. I, I think you need to change it. Right. Secondly, you need a good hair uh, makeup or re-over or redone. I, since I don't have it, so I can't know. I don't know who, <laughs> what it's called, but you need it. I'll do that. Take. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.